Hello, everyone. Happy New Year, well-ish, 2018 anyway. I'm calling this quick, clean, and simple ink blending. Uh, it's really basic, and it's a lot of fun. So I'm showing you the stamps that I'm going to use. It's called Be Unique by Brutus Monroe. Um, it's new to me. I don't know when it was released, but I think it's really cute. It's like these kind of funky, hipstery images, and I don't know. It just worked. It's, it's really cool. It's got some fun sentiments. Um, this is a piece of... Nina Solar White Cover Crest 80 pound cardstock. Um, I cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm just using some post it tape um, to mask off an area there. Um, I like post it tape because I don't tear the paper that's underneath it when I remove it, which is like one of my special superpowers. I watercolor a lot, and you would not believe how many <laughs> pieces of paper I have ruined thinking I can use my painter's tape uh, on other paper. Doesn't work. This is just an ink cube. It's a Hero Arts, I believe it's shadow gray, um, and then charcoal, and I think I'm also going to bring in a Memento er, Paris Dusk, maybe, which is like one of my absolute favorite blue inks ever of all time, ever. Um, I like totally join the blue man group if they were that color and I could be that color because that'd be rad. Um, and these are sponge daubers. They're the little ones that fit on your fingertips, except that I have like ginormous fingers. So they really don't fit very well in my fingertips. And I tend to just kind of like hold them in my hand, whatever it works. Um, and this is like the quick part of the ink blending. So you know how normally with ink blending you try to like get it all smooth and whatever. But because I was going for a super stormy sky, I actually kind of wanted that mottled, not very well blended look. So yay, winning. Um, it's really easy to achieve that. Um, not so easy to get a smooth blend. So this is this is great for that if, you, um, if you're if you not so good at the ink blending. Um and I just kind of wanted, like, you know, a section of the card to have kind of that that fun thing. But I still wanted it to be predominantly white because I like that contrast. So I'm just kind of alternating between the colors. Um, and then I I'm, am going to make sure that I take the darker gray, which I believe is the charcoal, and kind of, like, go over those edges pretty well to get that really sharp contrast. Um, and now through the magic of television or YouTube, I'm removing the tape and you can see there's a little bit of schmutz at the top and I did actually get a little bit of schmutz at the bottom as well. I'm not concerned about the bottom because I'm actually going to put my focal image over that. But, um, for the schmutz on the top, what I'm going to do is take an ink eraser, which I was grew up with it being called an ink eraser, but now everyone calls it like a Tombow Mono Sand Eraser or whatever, it's an ink eraser and it works great. So you just kind of like move it back and forth on your paper like sandpaper and it, uh, you know, it basically kind of gets rid of that ink. Um, it's just, it ceases to be visible. So yay, magic. Um, this is the stamp set again. I'm just kind of showing you um, that I'm going to use the bunny for this particular card. Um, <laughs> this is really awkward. Apparently I wanted to make sure that it was really well inked. This is a uh, Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I'm using this because it is an alcohol marker friendly ink. Um, and I intend to color this image with alcohol markers. It'd be really funny if I was like, it's for alcohol markers. And then I used something else, wouldn't it? Okay. Probably not funny, but funny to me. Um, so it's, it's a new stamp, so I'm just trying to be, like, really thorough getting it inked. I could have been smart and, like, you know, stamped it off once and whatever, but nobody has time for that. Instead, I'd rather spend five minutes making sure that I got it thoroughly inked because I'm talented. Um, this is a, just another piece of that Nina 80-pound um, Classic Crest Solar White cardstock. Um, I had... A bunch of it chopped into quarters at my local copy place. I think it was actually Staples. And um, I find it really handy. I like the 80 pound for coloring because it's way easier to fussy cut. Um, I like the 110 pound if I'm making card bases. But I'm not doing that here so it doesn't matter. Um, so I got a really good image. Um, which is cool. Especially since it's a new stamp. I'm zooming in to show you just like all the detail on it and just how cute the bunny is. Yay, we're the bunny. 
Um, and then I went ahead and colored it with my alcohol markers. And I will spare you that because I am by no means a talented colorist. Um, like, by no means. And I'm still kind of new to alcohol markers, so I'm awkward and slow. Um, I went ahead and fussy cut that out. And I'm just using a uh, Faber-Castell pit brush marker, black brush marker, to go around the uh, edges to take off like that white core of the paper. So it looks like I did a much better job cutting it out than I actually did. Um, Cause nobody really cuts perfectly. And um, yeah, there you go. So you can see that I had tried stamping it uh, before and yay for paper having two sides. Ha! <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and use some liquid glue that's in a fine tipped applicator bottle. Um, this is one of those Darice bottles. It's like four in a pack or something for a couple bucks. And I wanted to try putting one of the liquid glues that I like in it. Um, it works pretty well. Um, I was having a little bit of trouble with the liquid glue, but that is only because it's winter in the Pacific Northwest and everything freezes. And so glue that's normally like nice and runny and whatever stops being runny. It's kind of awkward, but the applicator bottle is great. And the glue, it's just like Elmer's glue. It's just like PVA glue. And then I'm just putting acrylic blocks on it to make sure that it dries uh, fully flat so that it adheres properly to the um, card panel. And you can see that like as the, as the ink dried on that um, blended portion of the background, it kind of like smooths out. Um, and I mean... I think it looks really good. If you don't like it, then, you know, you do you and whatever. But I it worked well for my purposes. So this stamp set has a bunch of little cloud images. And I'm going to take <laughs> – I'm going to try to get it sort of squared up on the stamp block eh, to varying degrees of success. Anyway, I'm going to take – I believe that's like the medium one. And I'm going to use white pigment ink to stamp it. Um, okay, so that is a brilliant ink pad, but I think it's actually got a different white pigment ink on it because I've had the ink pad forever and I couldn't find the reinker, and so I think I inadvertently reinked it with like uh, the Hero Arts Unicorn reinker. Whatever, it works. Um, so it is what it is. Um, so it kind of has a little bit of the brilliance and then kind of like not, what, eh, whatever. It's white ink. It works. I just needed the white ink. I'll probably have to fix that at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp like a bunch of these on here. Um, and then you'll see me come in with the smaller one as well. And I'm just kind of staggering them, making sure some of them go off edge so it doesn't look all matchy-matchy and like little soldiers all in a row. Um, and then... There you go. That's the the small one that I'm using. Um, I'm awkward with pigment ink, but it it does stamp like really well. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I have the lurgy. Um, it does stamp really well. And now I'm going to heat set that just because I didn't want to smudge it and smear it and make a big fat mess, which, you know, I'm rather prone to. So just heating that with my heat tool. Um, and sorry about that. Apparently I decided to play acrobatics with my camera. Um, this is just a Prismacolor white color pencil. Um, I, if you've seen any of my other videos, I, I have Prismacolor color pencils. They work great and I like the opacity. So I'm just really lightly using that white colored pencil to just kind of like fill in the clouds, not completely, but just kind of give them more of a look of cloud, but you still see that gray and that blue shining through. And I know that I missed a cloud there and I do eventually catch it and fix it, but I don't think I did it on camera. This is a jelly roll um, sparkle pen. It's like the clear one, except it's not really clear. It's kind of got like, I want to say almost like a silver shimmer to it. And, um, I am just kind of making these little dashes to look like raindrops. There's a, it, it's mimicking the raindrop stamp. That's actually part of the stamp set. Um, but the raindrops and the stamp set, they're open. Um, and I wanted it to be solid and I, I, couldn't figure out I'm just not that intelligent apparently but I couldn't figure out how to use that and still get the shimmer without 
it being kind of a mess and I didn't want to have to mask again and whatever. So I did this. It was quick. And I really like how it turned out because it has that kind of sparkly thing. And just to add a little more sparkle, I'm using that same um, Jelly Roll pen to just line the edges of um, the ink blending. Um, this is a VersaFine Onyx Black uh, ink pad. And you can see I split mine into two pieces because I hate that hinged lid. Um, and I'm using one of the sentiments from the stamp set, which is in this really funky font that I really like. It's kind of like scribbly and I like the sentiment a lot and I like that it's nice and long and it, you know, it just, it worked really well. Um, the sentiment is actually what inspired the whole card because I don't know, I, my year is getting off to not necessarily the best start. I hope yours is, you know, better, but it's just a reminder that things will get better. So I, I have a few friends who will definitely benefit from, from the sentiment. Um, and there you go. Stamped really well. So this is just a, um, it's a really light gray, uh, spectrum noir alcohol marker. And I'm just putting in a little bit of shadow. I'm not even really bothering with like a light source or anything. It's just cause it, it's kind of a shadow, but it could also be kind of like a little puddle of water or whatever. So it's fine that it's kind of free form. Um, I just didn't want the, the little character to look like it was floating there. And then I, I come back in with um, a colorless blender and kind of just smooth out the edges a little bit there. Um, so, yeah, call it a shadow, call it a puddle, call it whatever. It works. It grounds the image, and that's what I was going for. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and mount that on a top folding A2 size note card that is kind of a like a rosy pink color that matches the hat. Um, and the umbrella that the bunny is sporting. And I, I honestly don't know. It's just some colored cardstock that I had in my stash, so I really don't know what it is. Um, it could be. <laughs> There's a variety of things it could be. So that is um, the... That is... Oh, no. Sorry. I thought that was the end. But it is not. But wait. There's more. I'm going to use a Jelly Roll Glaze gel pen in black to... Um, just do like the eyes of the bunny and like the nose um, and just kind of like the facial features. Um, these glaze pens are really cool. They come in a variety of colors. I use the black and the white all the time um, because they're they're teeny tiny for getting in those little areas where you want to have, you know, the emphasis. And also they raise with or they dry with just a little bit of dimension. So it really kind of makes spatial features and things pop. Um, and this is... A Signo white gel pen, it's Uniball Signo white gel pen. Um, it's n honestly not my favorite gel pen, but it's a good gel pen, and it's the one I happen to grab. So, um, and I'm just kind of like using that in a few areas to add some highlights and kind of emphasize the roundness. Um, it's really it's amazing what a white gel pen can do in terms of adding some highlights. Um, especially, I'm not really good at, <laughs> like I said, I'm not really great with the alcohol markers. So um, I find that coming in after the fact with the white gel pen really contributes a lot um, to, you know, those highlights that I tend to kind of just <clears throat> inadvertently color over otherwise. Um, I actually use white gel pens a lot when I'm doing uh, color pencils on craft. Um, which I think you've seen in one of my other videos. Um, they're, they're just, they're great for that. So um, just kind of adding some dots and dashes and little curves and whatever with the white gel pen. Um, I'm slow. <laughs> this is not sped up at all, obviously. Um, but I just wanted you to see, it's not really, it's nothing magical. It's just kind of like, you know, little dots and dashes. And with this particular gel pen, you want to go slowly because... When you move it quickly, it tends to skip a bit. Um, so that is that. That is the finished card. And um, I'm going to bring in a second card that I made um, using the same stamp set. Basically exactly the same, except um, for the kitty. I believe that's kitty. It's on a blue card base. Um, and then there's blue in that rainbow hat, and it all kind of works. Um, so yeah, two... Very similar, but a little bit different cards. I had a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're inspired to make something and have a great day.